Hello, everyone. Wow. <laughs> My name is Michael Lissop. I am Senior Vice President and Chief Content Officer for KQED, and we have been such a proud partner in the celebration of City Hall's centennial year. And I also have the very distinct honor of welcoming all of you to this premiere screening of The People's Palace, a beautiful new 30-minute film which KQED is going to air, so please mark your calendars and tell your friends, Tuesday, November 24th at 7.30. And in just a few minutes, we're going to call up the producer, director, writer, Jimmy Yeager, to introduce the film to you. And I called it beautiful. Trust me, it is visually stunning, and it also has rare archival footage. But it's not just about this place. It's about people. There are some cameos from some very special people. People like former mayors Diane Feinstein and Willie Brown. Even people like our chief of protocol, Charlotte Schultz. And even KQED's very own legend, Belva Davis. And that's just to name a few. Jim, I'm sure, will mention some of the others. But this film, People's Palace, is not just about the place and the people. It's about moments. And as I'm sure many of you know, City Hall was built after the 1906 earthquake. And it represented the rebirth of San Francisco. And it sits here in the center of our civic and cultural vitality. And moments and events here have not only shaped San Francisco, some of those moments have influenced the world. And I know that many of you, I'm sure that all of you, have very personal, special reflections, feelings, experiences about this place. And for me, it's just one word, and it's wow. I mean, the last time I was on a stage like this, I was dreaming that I was in the movie Beauty and the Beast. Um, but seriously, City Hall lit up the way it is, by the way, with LED lights, lit up in the French colors. This rotunda, the grand staircase, it's just incredible. And some of the emotions that come through here every day, couple after couple, exchanging wedding vows, or if you're like me at one time, waiting in a really, really long line with your mother trying to renew her passport, only to find out that she didn't confirm an appointment online, it'll just bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> so we're going to show you the People's Palace in just a minute, but I have some very important people that I want to introduce you to, and we're going to start with our city administrator. She is also the chair of the City Hall Centennial Celebration Committee, and quite frankly, she was, she is the main driver in all the celebratory events and I hope you were able to attend the birthday bash in June in the Civic Center. And if you didn't, if you didn't, you missed an incredible collection of performances, food, people, culture. It was a great party. And she's also a main reason why the People's Palace, this film, got made. Please welcome Naomi Kelly. Thank you, Michael, for that introduction, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to San Francisco City Hall and the world premiere screening of the People's Palace. It has been a wonderful year dedicated to our treasured historic landmark. We have spent the past year celebrating City Hall's 100th birthday, and this great milestone became the city's catalyst to incorporate much-needed infrastructure upgrades like our external LED lighting system. And the global community noticed this lighting system this past weekend with extensive coverage of City Hall to, as we stood in solidarity with the city of Paris, our sister city. I want to... San Francisco is a world-class... San Francisco City Hall is a world-class building with a storied history for trailblazing policies that have had a global impact. 
But, but more than just a physical place, it represents ideas. This building's history is intertwined with our city's history, and this documentary captures not just our city's history, and not just the beauty of this Beaux-Arts masterpiece, but how it has been a place that has changed the world. I am proud to showcase the premiere of the People's Palace under the dome of this majestic building. I also need to take time to thank everyone who was part of this. I need to thank, most importantly, Rich and Tanya Peterson, our fundraising chairs. With your generous support, we would not have celebrated the 100 years of this treasured building that it deserves, and I must say, happy birthday, Rich Peterson. I, need, I, would, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Jim Yeager for stepping in to take on this project. What a fabulous way to tell the touching stories behind this iconic building, and thank you to everyone who participated in the film. I want to thank our public and private partners, our City Hall docents led by Ellen Schumer and volunteers, our San Francisco archivist Susan Goldstein, our city librarian Luis Herrera, friends of the library, thank you KQED. I want to thank Pamela Joyner and Fred Giuffredo. They were the very first to step in and say, we're going to be part of the city, of city Hall Centennial. Wells Fargo and the San Francisco Historic Preservation Committee. We are also pleased to have Jeremy Fish, the City Hall Artist in Residence, and the San Francisco Art Gallery's director, Meg Schiffler, with, the, with us tonight. Jeremy has been putting together wonderful exhibits to celebrate the 100th birthday of City Hall, and we'd like to invite you to, recep to a reception and birthday party on the ground floor tomorrow evening from 5 to 7.30 p.m. I hope everyone enjoys the film, and as Michael said, if, if your friends missed this screening tonight, it will air on KQED on November 24th. Thank you. Next up, I'm going to call up two people. They are the co-chairs of the City Hall Centennial Celebration Committee. Two people in two words to me come to mind, charisma and flair. First, the Honorable Willie Brown. Charisma and flair, I mean, I thought I had some cool socks on. Look at those socks. <laughs> and as you know, Willie Brown was crucial in the renovation of City Hall after the 1989 earthquake. <laughs> and joining Willie as he comes up here is, and not to be outdone with charisma and flair, is the woman who, when international dignitaries come to this city, she is the one that you want welcoming them to San Francisco. She's our chief of protocol, Charlotte Schultz. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Well, Willie, here we are on the stage again, right? We're on the Charlotte Schultz steps. I wanted you to say that. And you made that happen. <laughs> you made that happen. Well, Willie, uh, you have, uh, I guess the reason they have us up here is that we've been hanging around City Hall probably longer than any of the people here, right? So I was here when it was first built. Uh, yes, I know that. I didn't want to bring that up. I know, I know. But I knew you'd drop the I word could. Okay. later on. All right. But, Charlotte, we're actually here because uh, we were part of what? Naomi and, and the Petersons attended to do, and the mayor had us do it, like the mayor told us to be here tonight because he couldn't be here. That's right. Well, we show up, right? We show up any Sometimes place Sometimes we're not supposed to, right? If there's a microphone. But you know, through the time of all of this time that we've uh, been here on this, uh, in this wonderful building, uh, Willie has made history in this city in so many ways, some we can't talk about. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I think one of the highlights, Willie, was uh, you, you being the leader of the restoration, which was mentioned, of this beautiful building after the earthquake. But also, this is a beautiful, like a beautiful elderly lady. I don't know anybody like that, do you? Anyway, some of them need a little nip and tuck, 
And so along with restoring the city hall after the earthquake, you did a lot of nipping and tucking and you're a good guy to think, think through nipping and tucking for whatever. <laughs> so thank you for what you did. So why don't you, tell, why don't you tell us how you did that? And don't forget about the, the dome. That's my favorite part, well, okay? And in reality, Charlotte, this was a team, a real team effort, uh, because when we took over the mayor's job, uh, we were like over at we. we were over at 401 uh, Van Ness, right? And I couldn't figure out why would I get elected to be in a place like that when I'd left such a grand capital, not as grand as this building now is, but this building was in total disarray. And so our job was to come in here and do something about it. And we had to recruit lots of people because it was totally and completely underfinanced. And you can't do anything with city government without having the money already in the bank. Oh, yeah. Or you have to lie. Is that right? And having a license as a lawyer, I was already equipped to do that. So, <laughs> so, so it, was, it, was, it was a great challenge to first recruit a collection of people who would make sure that uh, what we were doing, it was okay to do. So we got Louise Rennie, we got Barbara Cawthon, we got a whole host of other people, and they did a good job of being the, giving us assistance. Yeah, but you were the leader to make Yeah, but late Don Fisher was just as good in all of that, and then we had to give the supervisors some additional space. Uh, they needed it, and, you know, and we had to was that reduce. inside the building or out? Outside. We, <laughs> and we had to reduce how many other city agencies would be here because you want to open up the light courts, which you see on each side. You want to make all those things work. And we did all that. And all of a sudden, the place was ready to be beautiful, except the cap, the dome up there was not right. It had not been damaged in the quake. And you can't do anything with public money in which there wasn't some damage from the quake. And, you know, it was, it was interesting how we did the interior of this. Uh, uh, there was uh, some people working here, and they did something with a torch or something, and they called and said, oh, Mr. Mayor, there is a fire. I said, where is it? They said, it's in the dome. I, I, said, uh, I said, when did it start? They said, about two minutes ago. I said, well, you called the fire department in about 15 minutes. And, that way we got the dome, the interior of the dome done. Uh, I didn't want to risk those far, but, but then the exterior, yeah, that, the goal a, that yeah, we needed. I like that part. Oh yeah, the goal that we needed in order to make this whole place as magnificent as it is, uh, San Francisco has this crazy rule that when you build a building in this town, a commercial building and what have you, you have to have a small amount of your investment has to be in art and it has to be so that the public can enjoy right. that art. Right. And a fellow named Jeffrey Heller came to see me raising unholy hell. These architects are really weird people. They don't want anybody telling them what to do. And he didn't want anybody telling them what to do in the building. So I sat there and listened closely, and when he finished, I said, where's your building? He told me where his building was. I said, you have a requirement of art, yeah. I said, suppose the money you were gonna spend on the art in your building, was spent where you could see it. He said, I'd go for that. I said, perfect. You're gonna put the gold on the dome. Yes. And that will allow you. And besides that, your permit will get approved quicker. <laughs> and so the results are, the People's Palace has a gold dome, what? as it was when Arthur Brown and his crowd first did this building. When you were here. That was, <laughs> we did it together. Yeah. Uh, and that's part of the nip and the tuck. Yeah. And believe me, we were criticized, if you remember, the Chronicle, the paper that I currently work for, was just horrible. They really went after us. On, and the day we opened, and thousands of San Franciscans showed up to indulge in the glory that's all right. this place. Right. All of a sudden, this became everybody's baby and there's not been one word of criticism since then. That means, you know, if you're doing something like we did, it turns out that it is 
the People's Palace. Oh, that's great, Willie. Well, this is the People's Palace, and obviously it's open to all of San Francisco's uh, throughout the year, throughout time. But you know, this also is a place, uh, and Willie, you've helped with this very much. Uh, we are an international city, and people like to come here, uh, all kinds of people, but also heads of state, uh, ambassadors, dignitaries, uh, delegations, and they come here for us to give them hospitality and to showcase our city hall and our government. So uh, many of those have been here. So if I could give you a couple of examples, okay? Charlotte, one of them. Yeah? That you didn't cover. The Nobel I haven't Prize even started winners. yet. The Nobel Prize I was getting winners. there. That was incredible. I, I'm just holding out because I'm still looking for the Nobel Prize. Oh. And what Willie is referring to is that one of the events we had was coming down this grand staircase as they do at, do at the at the Nobel Prize uh, in, in Scandinavia, they came down and we are blessed. We are blessed with all the institutions here that we have for knowledge, and that is Stanford and Cal and other universities. And we had, the, what, 40 Nobel Prize winners uh, that are living in this area to honor here. And the uh, princess of uh, Sweden was here. She's next, the, she's in line to be the queen and presented those. So that was in Willie's time. But I just want to tell a tuple, couple of things, and that is uh, back in the days, I think it was probably 69, uh, we had, had uh, I was at the Chamber of Commerce. I see somebody here from the Chamber of Commerce, Jim Lazarus, right? And uh, so the, the uh, king of Norway was coming. And so people said, you know, where are we gonna have this? Too bad we don't have a palace, I said, we have a palace. They said, where? I said, at City Hall. And they said, yeah, but people are lying in state. And I said, well, we're gonna tell them to scoot over, roll over, and we're having an event. So I went to uh, the mayor at that time, uh, the 69, that must have been uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, Italian guy. It yeah. So I, so I went to him and I said, okay, here, we're gonna do this. People will come down the grand staircase, there'll be tapestries, there'll be music, there'll be all kinds of things, beautiful food at a lunch. So he said, great, do it. So I said, one little problem. I said, they have the, upstairs, they have the judges at that time. And I said, they don't like noise. He said, tell them to play golf. And I said, with all due respect, would you tell them to go play golf, please? So anyway, that sort of started uh, many different things that we had. And one short, or short story, hopefully, for you, all of you, so we can see the film, is that when Dianne Feinstein was mayor, uh, the, uh, China had opened up, uh, yes, uh, President Reagan, he, the, the, Reagan was the president, and so the premier of China was coming, the first leadership to come to the United States. So he's coming to San Francisco first. I want to tell you that the White House, the State Department, is that right, sweetheart, George Schultz, were really worried about us, because they worry about San Francisco, right, of what we're going to do. So we had the premier of China coming down this grand staircase. Is the fire chief still here? Because we had about 8,000 people here. Uh, and we had the, the Chinese flags, we had music, we had uh, the symphony orchestra had a violinist that was Chinese American, et cetera. It was fantastic. So anyway, we did it. The premier went on to Washington. A few days later, I got a call from Mike Deaver, you know, the assistant to the president. Yeah. And he said, Charlotte, there's good news and bad news. And I said, well, I like, I let love good news. So I said, what's the, what's the good news? He said, well, the premier had dinner with the president at a state dinner at the White House. And I said, well, you know, you gotta eat somewhere. <laughs> and so I said, well, what is the bad news? And he said, well, the premier said to the president, the best part of this trip was San Francisco. <laughs> so, anyway. 
As Naomi said, the lights are shining. People are invited that are from all over the world as well as the people in San Francisco to the People's Palace. But don't we like to call it the uh, Palace for the People? Yeah, Palace for we the like People. We like that. Okay. That's what because that? Berkeley had the People's Palace. Uh-oh. Where is that? <laughs> so, it's anyway. A foreign country. <laughs> uh, I guess that they're going to do a film. It's the huh? film. Oh, yeah? And we're in it. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we're about to unveil the film, The People's Palace, and to introduce The People's Palace is the director, writer, producer. He's also an Emmy award-winning and Peabody award-winning filmmaker. KQED knows him very well, and let me just say, he's a great storyteller. Jimmy Yeager. Well, you can see why I would have such a great time telling a story about City Hall with characters like this. <clears throat> First of all, before I start, I just want to say I'm used to being on the other side of the camera, so I'm a little bit nervous, so I hope you'll bear with me. First of all, thank you all for being here. I hope you'll enjoy the film. And one of the best parts of doing a film like this, actually, is being able to have a night like this to bring people in and to see their reactions to the story that you're telling. And what better place for this story than right here under this dome? My editor who's here tonight, Jim Spadoni, and I had a wonderful time collecting all the archival images, some of which don't get seen very much, and the footage that's very rare, and it really brings the story and brings the history to life. And I guarantee that you'll never look at this staircase quite the same way again after you see the film tonight. Right, Charlie? <laughs> it's also wonderful having such a photogenic main character other than Mayor Brown. This building is an incredible main character to have for a story. And my director of photography, Bill Corona, and I had a wonderful time getting into all the nooks and crannies and getting all the angles that you don't see from this particular vantage point and I hope you'll appreciate it. One of the vantage points was on a boom crane 120 feet up on Polk Street uh, at 6 a.m. early one weekday morning. It was a little scary, but we got some great shots. These kinds of projects don't happen without the help of a lot of people who are really pulling for you, and we had a lot of people who were pulling for us through this project. Susan Goldstein and her staff from the History Center at the library got us wonderful material to use. Uh, Rob Ryder, who uh, helps run this building, got us into all the places and got us great access. Uh, Ellen Schumer, who is, I call her the grand dame of this building because anything you want to know about the history, she can tell you, and she made sure I got it right. And as several people said, this project wouldn't have happened without Naomi Kelly and her team, who really championed. We met one morning over breakfast, and I was actually there to meet her husband. And she says, oh, you know, you don't need to meet my husband. I have a project for you. And that's how it all started. And as Michael said, we have a great cast of characters in the film. I won't bother to introduce them all to you because you're about to meet them on screen. They are all great storytellers, and uh, they really did a great job, as I said, bringing the history of this beautiful building to life. And as uh, Naomi said earlier, Rich and Tanya Peterson, uh, this wouldn't have happened without their hard work bringing in all the funders, so thank you very much. My final thank you is to my husband, David. It's not easy living with a filmmaker through the creative process. We kind of get into our own heads and lose track of everything else. But David was with me through this whole process. He kept the home fires burning, and most importantly, he inspired me to do my best every day. I love you. So, I think that's enough talk. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the film.